Well, hello again. I thought you might be interested to see this, actually. I've just been blindfolded and uh, driven out into the bush by Lou Elizondo, who's on a uh, flying visit to Australia to talk to some other tinfoil hat... I mean, some other uh, first-hand uh, first witnesses of uh, ET technology. And he's driven me out to this secret location to, uh, to show me these impounded impounded alien spacecraft as you can see they've been here some time these crashed i think back in the uh back in the early 60s and uh they were all recovered to this top secret research and development uh, establishment this is the holding pen of course for the uh, uh for the uh, for the technology they have been disabled, so they can't fly anymore. That's why there's no uh, there's no mesh over the top of them, which uh, I'm sure would hold them more than uh, more than securely enough. So there you go. I'd like to thank uh, Lou Elizondo for uh, bringing me out to this top secret research establishment out in the middle of nowhere in Western Australia and showing me these three impounded alien spacecraft. He did tell me that they've uh, removed all the uh, all the insignia off them, and uh, all the sort of uh, all the hieroglyphic type writing. That thing in the foreground there, the rectangular thing, I think is part of it as well. That was uh, also recovered from one of these uh, one of these crash sites. Apparently, they go into the ground. They're about the, they're, they're the same shape underneath. So they go into the ground, I don't know, about six feet or so. Recovered and impounded alien spacecraft. Well, me and Lou have parted, uh, parted company. He was just telling me how, uh, you know, if I've been researching this subject since the uh, since the 1970s, that uh, all the books I've read so far are uh, rubbish. They're fiction. Uh, his book, of course, is the Gospel Truth. So uh, I'll be looking, I'll be looking forward to that one. And uh, talking of the Gospel Truth, <laughs> I was looking at. Uh, uh, not for very long, I must admit, but uh, is it Mr. Bledsoe? I mean, real, uh, if he's a true believer, Bledsoe, he's going to have an awful lot of explaining to do on Judgment Day, that's all I can say. He's going to be up there in front of St. Peter, well, you know, I'm just going to he be like Whitley Stryber. Well, I thought that's what was happening to me, you know, if it wasn't, you tell me what was happening to me. And, uh... <laughs> The, uh, the rest of the, uh, the UFO ET world, the fanboy world of ET and UFOs, UAPs, seems to, uh, seems to be continuing to crumble. People are saying, well, you know, this is all, it all came to a head, there was nothing there. You know, where are all these first-hand witnesses? Where is this evidence? Where is this tangible evidence that aliens are coming to this planet? We're not seeing any of it, are we? And now people are becoming more and more disillusioned with this and more and more people are thinking it's a complete and utter load of rubbish. Of course, in my opinion, more and more people are showing pretty good judgment. You know, I think there's an awful lot of people drifting a living out of this. There's an awful lot of rubbish being spruiked about it. And uh, it's about time, it's about time that... Uh... Well, sorry about that, but the, uh, the camera fell off the bloody windscreen so uh, anyway we're back in business now so what I was saying what was I saying oh yeah about Bledsoe yes he's going to be up there in front of St Peter St Peter is going to be <laughs> saying really <laughs> I don't recall dispatching anybody to see you on that particular occasion Mr Bledsoe um, but uh, 
Yeah, it's 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 continuing to crumble. There's another senator. I can't remember his name now, but he was saying um, it, it wasn't any of the usual crowd. Uh, if I can find his name, I'll put it in the uh, description below. But he was saying that um, they did investigate Grush's uh, uh, urgent uh, complaints, urgent and credible complaints, and uh, he said uh, he said Grush's complaints were credible but they found no evidence of aliens. So whatever his complaints were, obviously didn't relate to E.T. And uh, I've been watching a few of these YouTube channels that, that uh, uh, relate to uh, this sort of, this on the, they put out stuff on this subject. One is head and shoulders above the others because he asks the right sort of questions. He's not a fanboy. And because he's not a fanboy, he was asked to he was asked to join apparently this secret club that's behind the scenes you know someone said who's in it and he said well you name them they're in it so it's going to be all of the usual suspects it's going to be Grash, and Zombo, all these all the usual piffle peddlers and he said uh, and this guy said no he's not interested in being a member of this club and i thought that was uh, i thought that was great uh, this guy's come right up in my estimation and uh Apparently, Lua Elizondo has now blocked him. <laughs> he, won't, he won't be interviewed by him, and uh, he's blocked him. And that's because this guy won't follow their the secret club narrative. They need a secret club to keep all this nonsense going. This guy is not interested in uh, in, in joining the secret club and joining, you know, being told that you know if he wants to be a member of the club, then he has to follow the narrative, and he has to make like the other. YouTube channel that I've been watching, that it's all real, you know, arrows all lies. And uh, <coughs> I thought, yeah, good on him for that. And as soon as people, as soon as people refuse interviews from people that, that they know are going to push back and ask real questions, they don't want to know. They run away and hide under the table. And that's because they know it's all rubbish. They know there is no tangible evidence to support E.T. coming to this planet. The people are getting sick and tired of asking, where are all these first-hand witnesses? The video I did uh, on April the 1st, I think it's a pretty good example of first-hand witness testimony. Anybody can tell anybody anything. It doesn't mean any of it is real. If you look at my video that I did on April the 1st, just listen to what I say. Go and listen to what other people say. Now you tell me what the difference is. What's different between what I said and what they're telling you? It's so easy just to sit there and make up a cock and ball yarn about aliens, ET, you know covered alien spacecraft, being abducted by aliens. Without any tangible evidence, it's just a science fiction story. And more and more people are beginning to realise this every day. And uh, I think uh, I was watching someone else, Kurt Jemangle, I think it was, and he had Richard Dolan on there, and <laughs> Richard Dolan was looking pretty uneasy. And Kurt Jemangle was saying the same thing, you know, that there are no witnesses, where's the evidence? Everyone's asking for the evidence, none is being produced. And all the UFO fanboys can do is, 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 is try and keep this alive. Apparently the, uh, there were some people going to, was it Mellon and Elizondo were talking to the Canadian government and they were trying to talk up the threat part of the ET narrative. Canadian government said they'd have a look at it but they wanted to do a scientific investigation and they all ran away because they know there's no evidence. You can't do a scientific investigation if there's no tangible evidence to investigate. It would have been revealed that, that there'd be no evidence. Again, you know, so the Canadian government would be lying as well as Arrow, would they? As soon as they found out that they wouldn't, uh, you know, the UFO fanboys found out that the Canadian government wouldn't follow, wouldn't follow the threat narrative, the ET threat narrative, 
they all said, okay, not, not interested, don't want to know. Because without that threat, it's not exciting, you know, there's no, no one's going to be buying the books and going to listen to them talk and all this sort of stuff, you know, they're not going to be getting all these appearance fees, they're going to be selling their books and DVDs and, you know, making all their television programs. If more and more uh, credible people, people like Arrow, people like the Canadian government, are saying there's nothing to it. Um, so I, I thought that that in itself that in itself tells a tale. Um, oh, yeah, obviously I can't have I can't have notes. So I didn't I didn't actually make any notes for this one. I was, because I'm driving, I couldn't really read the notes either, could I? But um, there was something else. What, what, what else was that? It was the Elizondo, the Canadian government? But uh, anyway, the bottom line is, you know, there is no evidence. These people want to keep it alive for their TV shows. They're making money out of it. Tim Budget says, you know, he thought these he, he thought these people were first-hand witnesses, but it turns out these guys are frauds. And this UFO industry, this UFO business, is an industry. They're all employed by it. You know, there's a secret club behind the scenes that's trying to keep it alive. They say there's an ET threat, Ryan Graves, you know, urgent threat, aerial safety, yet not in the history of human flight has one aircraft been brought down by colliding with an alien spacecraft. It's ludicrous. It's, it's, it's just nonsense. They're going to keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. And everyone will be saying, where's the evidence, where's the evidence, where's the evidence? And more and more people, as no, as no evidence is produced, time after time after time, the first-hand witnesses run away, hide under the table, they no shows, they won't come forward. As I've said before, if they were really first-hand witnesses, they will come forward with a bit of tangible evidence, they get a Nobel Prize, they get piles of money, not one person for one recovered... <laughs> spacecraft recovery program, ET spacecraft recovery program, anywhere in the world has come forward and said, you know, I can prove ETs here. It's complete and utter nonsense. You know, the accolades they would get. They would go down in history as the person that, it will be a monumental discovery that we are not alone in the universe. And not one of them has, will come forward with a tangible bit of evidence to claim that Accolade? It's complete and utter rubbish, isn't it? It's, it's absolute bloody nonsense. <clears throat> and as I said before, Elon Musk, you know, he could he could pay somebody, you know, two or three hundred million dollars for a bit of tangible evidence from ET. Share the Nobel Prize. No one's gone to Elon Musk and said, you know, I can prove this is ET material. This is going to cost you X amount, X amount of money. I mean, that would be, you know, Musk could pay for that out of his back pocket. As I've said before, it'd be like me buying a bag of cheese and onion crisps. So the more you look into it, the less substance you find. All you find is the same, exactly as uh, Sean Kirkpatrick said. It's the same people, same stories, over and over and over again without a scrap of tangible evidence. So, uh, so there we go. If you think you can tell the difference between the story I put up on April the 1st and any of these other stories, just to just point them out for me, will you? Because honestly, I can't. And uh, who was it? Kremlin Jones. Yeah, he said, "Oh, yeah. Well, I didn't believe your story, but we know as we know as fact, Kremlin Jones has zero <laughs> critical thinking ability. If that was the only video of mine he had ever seen, he would have lapped that up. He would have loved that, and he would have spread that as truth. You can guarantee it."
expecting there to be a sign just around the corner here, but uh, it's one of these little, uh, one of these little, it's not really out back here, it's one of these little country towns in Australia. And uh, we might get a sign in a minute as we go around the corner, and if you're really bored, if you're sitting at home twiddling your thumbs, you've got nothing to do, or you live in a bedroom, a basement bed set. <laughs> And you haven't got you haven't got an OAP to go and buy some groceries for today. You could uh, you could look it up on Google Earth. Um, just haven't seen the sign. I think this might be Kalingiri. Oh no, it's Pia Wanning. P I A W A N I G. Pia Wanning. And as you can see, it's not far from Yorokoi. 2J. Alright, well if you struggle through the video all the way to this point, as usual, many thanks for watching. And uh, maybe I'll catch you again. Take a long turn, it's this gas bag making a video. I'll turn the camera off here, I've got to turn the car around and go down that other little road. Thanks for watching.